T3 thyroid hormone is one of the most important thyroid hormones out there. This doesn't mean that T4 and T2 aren't important, because they are, but you still have to recognize that most of the activity on the thyroid hormone receptor comes from T3. This means that all of the things that you want your thyroid to do, like grow your hair, boost your metabolism, help you feel happy and less moody, and so on, all come from the actions of T3. For this reason, maintaining adequate T3 levels should be your top priority, which is why today we're going to be talking about the most common causes of low T3, so that you can protect your T3 levels and ensure that you feel your very best. And number one on this list are issues with the thyroid gland. Problems with the thyroid gland are the most common cause of low thyroid conditions, and the reason is simple. If your thyroid gland isn't working, it won't be able to do its job, which is to create thyroid hormones. And if your thyroid can't create thyroid hormones, then the thyroid levels in your blood will drop, and you will end up with the condition of hypothyroidism. This concept is very straightforward, but what isn't as straightforward is how your body gets T3. When you look at the numbers, you see something very interesting. The vast majority of thyroid hormone produced by the thyroid gland comes in the form of T4. And this ranges anywhere between 80 to 90% depending on which study you are looking at. This leaves only about 10 to 20% left over, which is the amount of T3 produced by the thyroid gland each day. Even though the thyroid gland isn't a major producer of T3, it is a major producer of the thyroid hormone that will eventually become T3. Which is why, even though it may be a little counterintuitive, thyroid gland problems do result in low T3. This brings us to number two, which is decreased T4 to T3 conversion. If you are healthy, you can expect to produce about 30 micrograms of T3 thyroid hormone every day. Of this 30 micrograms of T3, only about five micrograms are created by the thyroid gland directly. And the rest, which is about 25 micrograms, is created through the process of T4 to T3 conversion. Remember, the majority of thyroid hormone produced by the thyroid gland comes in that T4 form and the majority of T3 created by the body comes from the conversion of T4 into T3. You may need to hear this a couple of times in order for it to sink in, so don't be afraid to rewind and rewatch this if you need to. Now back to thyroid conversion for a second. This conversion process occurs when the body uses special enzymes to take iodine molecules off the T4 compound, which then turns it into T3 thyroid hormone. Because these enzymes can be found all over the body and in different tissues, your body has the capacity to create T3 when and only when it needs it. But there's one big problem with this conversion process. There are a lot of different conditions that can interfere with it and act to either prevent it from occurring or slow it down significantly. Two of the biggest perpetrators of reduced T4 to T3 conversion are carbohydrate and caloric restriction. Whether you're cutting back on calories because you want to lose weight or reducing your carbohydrate intake because you're following a keto or a carnivore diet, both of these conditions can slow down thyroid conversion, thereby leading to low T3. What makes this problem even more sinister is the fact that you'd never know it existed if you just looked at standard thyroid lab tests. The only way to identify thyroid conversion issues is by looking at a combination of free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. But these are lab tests not frequently ordered by doctors. Given that most of the T3 found in your body comes from this conversion process, and the frequency with which problems arise in this process, this is by far the most common cause of low T3. So statistically speaking, if you have low T3, this is the first place to look. Next on the list is number three, which is known as relative low T3 or thyroid resistance. Before we talk about this, let's do a quick recap. If your thyroid gland can't produce enough thyroid hormone, you'll end up with low T3. Likewise, if your body is unable to convert T4 into T3, you'll end up with low T3. But what if your cells are resistant to the T3 thyroid hormone? What then? You won't end up with low T3 in your blood per se, but you will end up with a functional low T3-like syndrome. In other words, even though you technically have enough T3 floating around in your system so you won't get flagged as having low T3, your cells are unable to use that T3, so it might as well not even be there. This condition is known as thyroid resistance, and it's emerging as a common cause of thyroid dysfunction. This resistance syndrome isn't all that much different from the other resistance syndromes that you probably already know about, including things like insulin resistance, leptin resistance, and even progesterone resistance. 
The main difference is that thyroid resistance isn't as well understood or as well studied as some of these other conditions. But there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it's more common than we originally thought. Right now, the best way to tell if you have this condition is to rule out all other causes first. At that point, you can then assess whether your symptoms persist or not. If they do and everything else looks good, thyroid resistance may be your primary issue. Number four on the list includes illnesses or chronic medical conditions. Let's imagine for a second that your thyroid gland is working perfectly, that your thyroid can convert T4 into T3 without any issues whatsoever, and that your cells are perfectly sensitive to T3 thyroid hormone. But, and this is a big but, you have other medical conditions, including things like obesity, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure. The presence of either acute or chronic and long-lasting conditions can negatively impact your thyroid lab tests. This condition, known as non-thyroidal illness, is another common cause of low T3. And unfortunately, doctors aren't quite sure what to make of this condition. Some doctors will say that it's a normal physiologic response to these conditions, but there are others, myself included, who think it's more than this. The question is really, do you treat somebody who has low T3 that is caused by a non-thyroidal issue, or do you let them write it out and simply monitor their labs? It's not clear whether the use of T3 is a good idea if you have this condition, but I do know what is. Ignore your thyroid and manage those other underlying chronic medical conditions so that they can relieve pressure on your thyroid. If you are somebody who is listening to this and you're taking anywhere between three to five different prescription medications, there's a good chance that making changes to your lifestyle can help you get off of one or more of these medicines. Things like changing your diet, exercising more regularly, reducing your stress and sleeping more can go a long way to improving your health and reversing these chronic medical conditions. And the best part is I have free information that can help you do every single one of those. So if you are somebody who thinks your medical condition is causing your thyroid problem, make sure to address those other medical conditions first. That way you don't even need to worry whether or not taking thyroid medication will be helpful or harmful in your specific situation. Number five on the list are nutrient deficiencies. If we look closely at the steps required for the body to take T4 and turn it into T3, we see a necessity of multiple vitamins and minerals at every step. And just like you might imagine, if there's a deficiency in any of these vitamins or minerals, your body will have a hard time creating enough T3. Take for instance the creation of thyroid hormone. I already told you that problems with your thyroid gland can result in low T3, which is true. And even though the most common cause of direct thyroid gland problems is the autoimmune disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis, nutrient deficiencies are still high up on that list. For instance, iodine, iron, and tyrosine are all required by the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. And while deficiencies in tyrosine are not very common, deficiencies in iodine and iron definitely are. And these are just the nutrients required for the body to create thyroid hormone. Other minerals like zinc and selenium are needed for the body to convert T4 into T3, and vitamin A is required for thyroid hormone cellular sensitivity. It would be one thing if these deficiencies weren't very common, which means their negative impact on thyroid function would be rare, but that's not the case at all. Based on research, 40% of Americans aren't getting enough vitamin A from their diet, 12% of the population is at risk for zinc deficiency, this number jumps to 40% in the elderly, and 17% of premenopausal women are iron deficient. These are not insignificant numbers, and there's physiologic evidence to suggest that deficiencies in these nutrients may be a real cause of low T3. Fortunately, it's actually pretty easy to replace these deficiencies, which means that you never want to miss this cause of low T3. Number six on the list are prescription medications. There are tons and tons of medications out there that can interfere with your thyroid. And some of these medications are prescribed for very common conditions like depression or high blood sugar. From thyroid hormone production, to thyroid hormone conversion, to even the thyroid communication between your brain and the thyroid gland, prescription medications can negatively impact your thyroid in many different ways. And it's my opinion that prescription medications are an often overlooked cause of low T3. Here are just a few of the medications that I think you should be aware of. Drugs that interfere with T4 and T3 levels directly include antidepressants such as SSRIs, lithium, iodide, amiodarone, pain medications and narcotics, and beta blockers. Drugs that interfere with TSH levels include metformin, steroids, and dopamine agonists. And drugs that impact thyroid hormone binding and transport include 
estrogens in contraceptives and HRT, steroids, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen and aspirin. If you know or suspect that you have low T3, make sure to look at your prescription medications. Even if you must take a prescription medication, there are almost always alternatives in different drug classes that don't cause thyroid problems. If you think that these problems may be negatively impacting your T3, then you will probably also want to know how to naturally increase your T3 level. And to do that, I'd recommend checking out this video next.